Welcome back to Game Saga's Let's Play of Chrono Trigger for the Super Nintendo. As you can see, we are in the jail cell here after the trial. That's where we left off. And I clicked on the pink thing there. And it's not actually food, it is a ether, which is used to restore MP. And you can hit the mug there to get health and magic back as well. And what you have to do to get out of here is rattle on the the uh, bars there three times and the guard will open it up and one of them will come in to, to attack you, which is what's happening now. And you get up and you can uh, whack him from behind like so and take him out. And then when you try to leave, the other guard fights you. These guys are pretty weak. You can take them out in one hit. As you can see. You don't get a whole lot for it. 10 experience, 1 tech point, 70 gold. Not worth a whole lot, but... You don't have a choice in fighting them most of the time. Though if you get the right angle on them, you can knock them out. You can see this one doesn't open all the way. So I can't go in there. I have to go a different way. And I was trying to remember how I get in there. I couldn't remember that there was a hole in the wall or I had to do something different. As like I said, it's been a while since I've played through Chrono Trigger all the way. So eventually I said, okay, I'll just leave this area and come back to it if I have to. And we're not going to go up top yet. We're going to go across here. Across one of these bridges. That connects the tower portions of the castle. There's another guard for us to fight. Now I could have knocked him out. I didn't realize that at the time. But if you knock him out, you don't get any experience or tech points for it or gold. But you do get items when you uh, hit the A button on their body. You usually get mid tonics, which are used to restore. Health. And that was a treasure room there. We got some items. And here comes another special type of guard. This guy is a little bit tougher. They're called Omnicrones. And he's got, I think, over 300 hit points. So it's going to take a few turns to kill him. I got lucky there, he missed me when he was trying to attack me, and he missed again. And you don't actually technically kill him, he just kind of gives up and runs away. He said they don't pay him enough for that. So apparently he was a hired gun. And we're going back to the other side now. Now we're going to go up top here. I tried to get around these guys here, but you can't do that. Unfortunately, you have to fight them. These guys are, guys are called blue shields. And you're supposed to attack them when they reveal themselves like that. That's how you do damage to them. Because if you try to do it otherwise, you only do like three, four, five damage, something like that, per hit. Which will take forever to kill them. And like the guards, they don't give a whole lot of experience or anything, either. Not significant enough to want to spend your time grinding on them. And we don't have to go in this particular cell, but I did anyway. So I couldn't remember if there was anything worthwhile in here or not. But it's just a skeleton that comes to life. And they're called Descendants. And they take a couple of hits. For Chrono. About 120 health or so, maybe a little bit more. And that's like doing that one, so we're going to go to the next one. And it's another one that doesn't open all the way, so we have to find another way in there. And as you can see, off to the left of the screen, there's a hole in the wall, so we can come in through that way. But we have to find another way outside first. And not this outside, I'm talking about climbing on the tower. 
which we'll do later. Here's some more guards we gotta fight. Nothing too challenging for Chrono. Let's see if we can take them out in one hit each. And here we are, another part. And you can sneak by by hiding in these little alcoves. And you can sneak up on the guards and whack them from behind, like so. And if, like I said, if you hit the A button on their body, you'll get a mid tonic, which is nice. I didn't realize that when I took out the first one in the, the cell that Chrono was in. So I missed one, but that's okay. And I'm not sure if we have to go in here or not. Um, there's a treasure chest there to open the pentonic, and there's this this guy who's getting ready to be executed. You can choose whether you want to save him or not. I clicked yes. I don't know what happens if you click no. I guess he just stays there. But his name is Fritz, and he is the son of a shopkeeper in Truce Village. So we're gonna go pay a visit to him later on, probably in the next video. There's another guard here. You can't really avoid this one, unfortunately, so you gotta fight him. But, like I said, it's not like they're a real challenge. <laughs> It'd be different if it, would take, if it was gonna take like 20 turns to kill it or something like that. And I forgot to go in this room back here, so I went back here to do that. And there's a bronze mail, which we actually already have for Chrono. And I forgot to equip it, or try to. And like this, you see there now, we already have the bronze mail, we bought it. We didn't actually have to buy it, we could have waited until we got here, but I didn't remember that, so I went ahead and bought one. At least I think I bought it, I might have found it somewhere else. I can't remember. But we've got a couple more of these skeletons to kill. They come to life after you open the treasure chest and try to leave. And we did a critical on that one, so that'll make it a little bit quicker. Even though there's that crack in the back of the wall, it doesn't seem to do anything. It's just there for decoration, I guess. And now we can leave this part of the dungeon prison area. And we're going to go back outside. Over to another side of the other tower. And collect some more treasure chests. There's the dude that was in this cell, and he turns to a skeleton as soon as you click on him. That's about all you can do in there, it doesn't do anything else. Kind of pointless for that particular cell, but oh well. And we gotta face some more of the shields. And I accidentally clicked on that one. As you can see, it only did three damage, so if you don't wait until they remove their shield, then you don't do a whole lot of damage. And I think they do the counterattack that you saw as well. Which doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but it's still something to be aware of. And once they do remove the shield, of course, we can take them out in one hit. of cell doors. So much fun opening these repeatedly. Huh. That one's already open for some reason, not sure why, but here we are where we're outside again and I accidentally went back inside. This is where you scale the tower. And for some reason, Chrono cannot go left or right. He can only go up or down. He can only go left or right if he's on a platform. Well, that's pretty annoying, I think, but oh well. And we can go down this little manhole looking thing right here to go down to the one below us, which is the one we couldn't get in earlier. This is right next to where we started. 
And we got a load sword, which is the sword we wanted to buy at the very beginning of the game, but we didn't have enough gold for it. And we didn't feel like grinding out the gold. So you don't actually have to buy one, you can just wait until you get to this part of the game and get one for free. As you can see there, I was realizing you can't go left or right while you're climbing. So I was trying to scale up the building here. Tower, whatever you want to call it. It's very annoying to have to line up your, your climbing perfectly with the openings. And that's why I was having some difficulty left there. And I can't remember if you could go further up or not, but I don't think you can. I think it's just the one door down at the bottom there, and then you go back in to proceed with the rest of the game. I was climbing around to make sure, just in case. And we're done there, so we're gonna move on. And the show guys came back, but we don't have to fight them again because we're going up here. And I decided I was gonna heal up Chronos. I remembered that the boss was getting ready to come up soonish. But it's actually not on this part, we have to fight these guards first. But they don't do a whole lot of damage, so it's not that big a deal. This guy did 11 damage to me, which isn't very much. Alright, now we can leave this part. And there's one of the supervisors. And he runs away. And then someone's whacking him on the stairs. And that's Luca. She's back. I think you said she came to help us out. And uh, we're gonna escape with her. You click on the supervisor and you get some med tonics. And you click on the note there. And that will tell you how to defeat the boss. You're supposed to attack the head of the boss first, that's, that's the way you go. As, as you'll see, the head will heal the boss. I decided to go ahead and heal both characters anyway, just in case, since I knew the boss was coming up. And of course, save it again. And here we go, we're getting ready to fight the boss. Before we can leave the prison area. And there it is, the dragon tank. It's kind of ridiculous looking, but <laughs> that's the chancellor for you. Nothing to, to not be ridiculous. And you got three targets here. You got the head, you got the grinder, which is the wheel, and then the tank itself. You have to take out all three of them to win the battle. As you can see there, you can use your techs and take out all three, but Flame Toss doesn't do any damage to the head. So, you gotta use your physical attacks on the head to kill it. Even though Luca's physical is pretty weak. And this dude does quite a bit of damage when he does that charge attack there, it is between 30 to 45 damage per hit. And that flame thing does around 20 or 25. And the missiles are a little bit less to worry about, but even so, I mean, look, they're at half their health. So Luca's gonna serve as my healer here, using items, and she doesn't actually have a healing ability. That way we can make sure we don't die. Because that would be bad. And I decided to use Fire Whirl on the, the wheel and the body, but just to do a little bit of damage. But they really probably won't do much since the head's gonna heal if I don't kill the head. Mm. But I had already done that, so. 
and then I attacked the body. But I'm supposed to be attacking the wheel first, actually. And I had forgotten I killed the head already when I did Fire Whirl. I was going to heal Chrono before I healed Luca because Chrono is more important to keep alive since he could probably kill this boss off by himself if I really wanted to do it that way. And he does that laser ability which does around 30 damage per hit. And you just gotta rinse and repeat here, just keep attacking the body and pretty soon it will be dead. And that was the last hit right there. I learned, sl learned Slash for Chrono, which is a tech ability. Which does not look like, like, like that one there, that's a different one I think. And then that was done automatically. And tank blows up, and two of the guards and the chancellor are left there to make a bridge for us. And he goes stand on them for a while and do nothing. And chancellor just keeps saying the same thing. So now we're back in the castle, the castle proper, and we're here to escape. And I'm making sure I didn't leave off any treasure chests, like the shelter I got there. And these guards are gonna chase us. And we find some more guards and they're gonna chase us. And then Nadia or Marley, whatever you want to call her, comes down and tells the guards to stop. And they do momentarily, since she's the princess and is in charge of them. But then the chancellor comes in. Somehow he managed to get off the bridge, I guess. Unless there's two chancellors again. And he yells. That has to do what the king says. And then king comes in and tells Marley to shut up and says that uh, she doesn't have any right to, to do what she's doing, basically. And she protests and says that they shouldn't do that to Chrono and Luca because they're her friends and she says it's common sense. And then she says she's fed up with them and she's gonna leave. And then the Chancellor sends the guards after, the, after our trio. And now we're in the forest here and we've got to escape the guards. And this is kind of funny because they don't ever try to attack you, they just there and follow you. That's all they do. And we run here and we are in the screen where there was a black treasure chest from earlier. And we have another gate. So that's going to be our escape method here. We're going to open the gate and go to another time period. And they're debating about whether or not they should go through the gate. Luca and Marley. Meanwhile, Kronos sits there and like, I don't care. You, you can do whatever you want. And here's the guards and the Chancellor's back now to prevent us from going that direction. Off to the left. It's pretty funny, like I said, they don't try to attack you, you can you can even go up and talk to them, which is what I did, just to see what would happen. And they just basically tell you you can't get away, and you're stuck here until you click on the gate, and that's all you can do. So, that's what I did. And the Chancellor has that shocked look on his face. And said we disappeared, which is technically true, we did, but we're just going to the same general location, just in a different time period. And here we are in the future. And you see a door looking thing in the background there that we can't open yet. Which we'll see in a minute here. This is what happens if we click on one of those. Gives you the same kind of message that the black treasure chest does, which should tell you that you have to have the same item to open both of those, which is true. And we won't be able to do that until a little bit later in the game.
I was looking to make sure there wasn't any equipment for me to equip on Luca or Marley. Now we're going to go and talk to all these people in here, because this part of the game I couldn't really, really, really remember what I was supposed to do. So we're going to buy some equipment here. Buy a new weapon for Luca, and armor and helmets for all three characters, since we have enough money to do so. And all, all three of them can actually use the same thing, which is rare. And gotta equip everybody now. And I forgot to equip the weapon on Luca. So I gotta do that. But first I'm gonna sell off the old stuff. Get some of the money back that I just spent. And I almost accidentally sold the weapon for Luca, which was a mistake on my part. It's a good thing I didn't, because I would have wasted some money. That's when I realized I forgot to equip it. So I equipped that on her, and I just clicked on no to see what the guy would say. And these, the rest of the guys pretty much tell us things about what we need to do, and where we are. These guys look similar to the one that was in the jail cell that turned to a skeleton. And this device here that we're in is called the Enerton, and it will st restore our health and magic, but leave us hungry, which doesn't have any effect in the game as far as I know. And there's a, one of the special doors in the background that we can't open yet. The future area has several of those that we're going to have to come to later in the game. These are some new enemies in the game, and they're pretty annoying. Octopods have 130 health. And they do that little, I don't know, sucking attack? I don't know what else you would call it. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but it's irritating, nonetheless. Because both of them get an attack in before you get an attack. Other than that, they're not much threat. Now the meat eaters will heal, as you just saw, and they heal the entire group of enemies at the same time, which is annoying. So we gotta take them out, they don't have a whole lot of health, just 75, but we still need to get rid of them as quickly as possible, ideally. And then Mar Marley learned Aura, and Aura Whirl. Whirl which is a dual tech for Chrono and her, and both of those are healing abilities, which will come in handy. And she'll be our healer for the time being. And we're just trying to get the treasure chest here and avoid the rats that are running around. That is not to feel like doing any more battles than were necessary. Normally when I go through here, I run into all the routes, but somehow I managed to avoid them. And we got more of these guys to kill. And we're gonna open that treasure chest you see there after we finish this fight. And I went slow through part of this area because, as you can see, the treasure chests tend to tend to blend into the surroundings because of the, they're the same basic color tone. So I want to make sure I didn't miss any. For some reason, Marley and Luca are getting a lot of criticals. I don't know why, but that's pretty cool. At least they're pretty weak otherwise. And we got another load sword, which doesn't do us a whole lot of good since we already had one. I guess it's there if you miss the one that's in the prison. I don't know how that rat doesn't get me there, but we managed to avoid it. 
now got to load the bow for Marley, which is a nice upgrade for her. And despite trying to avoid these enemies, we still trigger them somehow. So we got two of the meat eaters this time, which is going to make this slightly more difficult. Since both of them can heal. And you can you, you could probably use sex on these guys, but since they're not really grouped together that well, it's just gonna be a waste of your magic. So I would just use physical attacks and whittle them down. And there you see they both healed like that one that on the right just got healed to full. But he'll be dead in a second, so like so. other one is too. So even though they heal, they're not really that tough. It's just annoying. And Luca learned Hypno Wave, which is a tech of hers. And that puts enemies to sleep, as the description said there. And I was looking at the text there just to see what I had. And these guys are enemies, these little crater looking things. You can fight them if you want to, but you don't have to. As you can see, I ran by them. And those purple looking blob things are enemies as well. But you're gonna avoid them. I decided I didn't want to fight them. So they're tougher, and you'll see why momentarily. Because we're gonna have to fight some right here. We've got three of them that we've got to fight. And they're called Shadows. And I did Fire Whirl on two of them, because that's my best ability. And took those two out. And Marley missed with the physical attack. And she got slowed by an attack that he did. Flame toss for Luca and killed him. And I think the, what it is, the physical attacks don't work on those guys. I think is the issue. And you gotta fight three more of them. for once and got all three of them in the fire world and took them all out in one hit that's how it's done right there and we got a level up for Marley and it's a mutant thing off to the side there which we're gonna try to avoid and we tried to avoid this one too but he still managed to attack us these guys have 300 health, so they would have significantly more than the rest of the guys in this area. It's going to take a few turns to kill them. They're not much of a threat though, it just takes a while to kill. You do this slurp ability to steal your health, but that's about it. And that one's dead. So we're going to move on to the next area. We're on the other side of the lab portion now. So we're going to go into one of these domes here. This is Aeris Dome. exploring here and we can talk to these people and this old man decides to interrupt our exploring and starts talking to us and they're excited to see people that have crossed through the ruins 
Rhines, Rhines, however you say that. If you say no, then you'll tell them that you came through a time portal and they don't believe you. But it's actually true, you did come through a time portal. And some of the other NPCs talk about going down below where they are. And that no one that goes down there ever comes back, basically. I'm going to talk about something called Death Peak, which is a later part of the game. And this is our shopkeeper for this area. And he sells the same basic stuff that we got at the other vendor. I was selling off some of the old equipment and decided to buy some consumables. Obviously there's a save point there as well. So we're gonna save the game. And we're going to proceed with going down beneath after we talk to the old man who calls himself Dome. And they say that there's food down there, which they need food of course. And uh, a computer as well. But they can't get through because of robots. And as you can see, he said no one ever comes back. But we're going to go down there anyway, because we don't have a choice. We have to. So. Otherwise, we will not proceed it in the game. And as you can see, we can't go to the right yet. And that is because we have to have a passcode. Our password, as the game calls it. Which, even though, if you already know it, you still can't do it, I don't think. But I might be wrong. I couldn't remember what it was, so I just decided to proceed with the normal route. And we got an alarm going off in this room for some reason. And try to leave, and this guy drops on you. This is a boss, which I forgot that this was here, so I didn't heal up before this fight, which is a mistake on my part. So my characters were not at full health, which didn't bode well, but I'm going to heal them up to make sure they don't die. I'm going to try out Slash here, which is a new ability we got for Crawl. Well, it does okay damage, not great, but it's okay. And like I said, we're going to heal up. And Aura Whirl is a ability that will heal all three of our characters at the same time. So that's better to use in this case, since all three of them need healing. Chrono, especially. There we go. Alright, so this boss, you need to take out the bits. Those are the little small things on the side first. Because they are going to be the ones that are, are, that are attacking you. So you want to make sure to take them out. So you don't die. Because that would be bad. I did fire a whirl on that, so that's one of my best abilities. And I should have hit the guardian, the big dude in the middle, too, but I did not. We took out the one of the bits. And Marley's gonna serve as my healer, basically, except for when I don't need healing, in which case. She will melee attack. Or a ranged attack in her case. And then there's ability there, Amplifier, which I think the uh, Guardian did that, but I wasn't sure. It was hard to tell. Took out the other bit, so now we can focus on the big guy, which is called the Guardian. I 
And that means use fire world on him until he's dead, basically. But we can wait, we can't. He did zero damage. So magic attacks do not work on the Guardian. You gotta do physical attacks. Which is gonna take make it take longer since physical attacks are not as strong as the fire, fire world is. And you can see he's counting down to something. So I'm gonna have to try to kill him before he finishes counting down. Probably not gonna succeed since he's down to one now and down to zero. And the countdown is a countdown to bringing back the bits. So we gotta kill them, them again. Yay, huh? <laughs> Just what we wanted to do. Kill these stupid guys again. So we're gonna make it a little bit quicker and just do physical attacks on them instead of magic. Since the fire world is the only thing that really did any significant damage. And it actually does more damage to do three physical attacks with all three characters than to worry about doing dual attacks. And we took them out pretty quick, so now we're gonna focus on the Guardian again. And with physical attacks, like I said before. And we should. Should probably kill him this time, I think. Yep, that was it. We just killed him. It is an ability called Breakdown, which is a strange th thing for him to use to die, but that's what happens. And now we can go up to the north here. And we got levels for all three characters, which is nice. And there we see the food storage area. And a guy up there and a treasure chest. Marley says it stinks, and that's because everything has rotted. As Luca tells us. And the guy up there is dead. And the guy has a seed, which we retrieve, and that will come into play later on. He also has a piece of paper that tells us we need to catch the, catch the rat that was on the screen before the boss. This screen. And there's the rat. So what you have to do here, you gotta chase the rat around and catch it. And it will tell you the password to proceed. And I forgot the direction to go there, so I missed the rat, so I'm gonna have to go off the screen and come back to make him reappear. Which I didn't realize that before I, I did this. So that's why I'm running around looking for the rat. I keep it in which direction to go. <laughs> so here we go, we're gonna go off the screen to make the rat reappear. And there it is. So we're gonna catch it now. So we can proceed. And it's not too difficult. Just have to make sure you dash. And to access the next area, we have to hit L and R and A at the same time on the computer. It's right here. If you do that, and that triggers the platform to reappear for us to go across. And now we're in the room with some more enemies. And I was waiting to get an opening so I could run by them, so I don't have to fight them. But there's a treasure chest up there, so I want to get to that, so I'm going to have to try to avoid them again. And get the chest, which has a mid ether. Somehow I managed to avoid them several times. And there's these beetle looking things down underneath here. I'm gonna try to avoid them as well. And 
and we managed to do so, just by a couple of close calls. And we got a robot here on this next screen. This is a pretty big area right through here. Some of those shadow things down there. And a rat running around. Several rats. And more robots. So I was just, just exploring because I couldn't remember which direction I was supposed to go. Or where there were any treasure, treasure chests or not. So I was looking around for that kind of thing. trying to decide which overall direction I want to go. There's a computer down there, so that's where I'm going to try to get to that. Let's see if we can use that. But I don't think I can. And if I can, it just goes to one of those sealed doors, which doesn't do a whole lot good for me. As you can see, it just opened that platform right there for me. So you just use the same passcode L and R plus A to get that platform to go up here. And we'll come back to that later since that's a one of those sealed doors. Here we are in the computer room. Somehow Luca News is still operational even though it didn't look like it was on to me, but I guess she knows better than we do. And she activates the computer. This is one to show us where a gate is for us to go to another time period. This is a dome that's off to the east of us. And it's called Proto Dome. Marley decides she wants to hit a button too. She hits a different one. And this is showing what the world looks like in 1999 AD before the future became what it is now. This is the day of Lavos. Who is coming out of that crater there. As you can see there he is. He's exploding everywhere and raining fire down on everything below and basically throwing the world into what we see now in the future. And Marley's basically going to say we have to do something about it. And we need to change history, like when we saved her. And Loco seems to be tentative about it. And I said I don't want to do it. <laughs> and Loco tells us to show Marley what we were made of, and then Chrono flexes. So apparently that's all she had to do to convince Chrono to do it. And we get some of my favorite music in the game playing in the background here. And I clicked on the computer for some reason. I don't know why. But that was a mistake on my part. Because you can't skip out of this cutscene. This is it's the same thing we just saw with Lavos. But this time with the benefit of having the awesome music in the background. Even though the alarm is still going off, which is kind of funny. Click on the other one too, which I shouldn't have done. Let's just do the same thing. This one showing us where Proto Dome is. Now we're done here, we're gonna leave out of this area.
not much else to do here. I mean, you can kill enemies if you really want to, but that's still pretty much a waste of time. You don't have to, so why bother, right? Just being careful through here to try to make sure I don't run into any of these guys. I so didn't want to waste time fighting them. And we're pretty much done at this dome. That's all we can do here. And we're back. And all the people are surprised that we came back from underneath. Because no one had ever done that before. And the group realizes that it's the future of the, their time period. And the other people want food. And we give them the seed. And he gives us the bike key, which we can use on a jet bike on lab 32, which is where we're going to be going to in a little bit. People say the pretty much the same thing that they did before, so it's not much to do. This dude didn't want to get out of my way, which is annoying. I hate when the NPCs just stand in your way and won't move. It's very frustrating. That's what I was experiencing there. He wouldn't get out of the way. Despite what it looked like an opening there to run around him, you had to go around the other side, which is stupid. But, oh well. You can go in here if you want the sewer access, but I don't think that you have to at this part of the game. So we'll come back to that later on. Lab 32 is where we need to go. And there's not much here, except for the treasure chest we got and the jet bike you see there. Click on that and try to use it. And that triggers these robots to appear. And we're gonna have to fight them. Or are we? Nope, because here comes this guy. The man, as the robots call him. His name is Johnny, and he's apparently their leader. And he wants to race us between him and the jet bike. He is a jet bike built into himself, I guess. I see the man rides like a roller coaster. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but okay. <laughs> So you click on the jet bike and we've got to do a race scene here. I used to hate this part of the game because I thought it was difficult when I was younger, but it's actually not that hard. You just got to keep keep going and save at least one turbo for right before the end and then use it and you win. That's pretty much all you got to do. Not that difficult. This is using some of the mode 7 effects here, I think, of the Super Nintendo. That's how they did this. It resembles what you would see in, in pilot wings and that sort of thing. So I used the turbo like right before the end, like I said, and I won on my first try. This is pretty cool. Play some more good music. This game had a lot of good music. I think it's because uh, Omatsu, who did the Final Fantasy music, worked on this game, if I remember correctly. He's one of my favorite composers from the video games. And we're done with that, so we can move on. This thing there, that's the factory. We're going to be going there in our next video. But for now, we're going to go into Proto Dome.
And anyway, we gotta fight some robots here. Couldn't avoid these, unfortunately. They're called buggers. They have 100 health. Not too difficult. We killed them with two hits. Near that mole watch of attack, which doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Just 11. Per hit. So, they're pretty weak enemies, but. Annoying nonetheless because it wastes time. Of course, between the two girls, Marley and Luca, they can't kill one on their own unless they both get criticals. But Prano had to finish it off. And now we're gonna fight four more of them. So, since they're all grouped up like this, we're going to use a dual attack Fire Whirl. Take out three of them in one hit. Could have been all four, because as you saw, the sword hit the fourth one, but it did not actually touch, do any damage to it. Now, unfortunately, Fire World did not take them all out, which I thought it would. So we're just going to finish them off one at a time. I decided to do Flame Toss for two of them for Luka. I wanted to get all three, but it didn't want to let me do all three. So Luka took out two of them. And Marley's going to take out the last one. There's another Inner Ton we can use to restore our health and magic. And there's another robot thing. For some reason, it's not attacking us. Why is that? Well, that is because he's not an enemy. And the group is talking about the robot and what to do, pretty much. Luca says she can fix it. So Marley doesn't want to do it because she thinks it might attack them. And Luca basically says that that won't happen because she's not going to program it to do so. So Luca's got the robot fixed, and they turn him on, and he's all excited to be working again. Introduces the group to the robot. And the robot likes to be formal with titles and everything, which is pretty funny. Marley doesn't want to use his serial number for his name, so we're going to call him Robo instead. That's his default name. The group wanted to know why there weren't any people around, and Robo's not sure. And the gate that we need to go through is behind that door, I think. But we can't get in there because the power's off. So we have to go up to the factory and turn the power on, and Robo says that he can help us with that. So, since we have four characters, we can't have four at one time, so one's gonna have to stay behind. And since Marley has our healing abilities, we're gonna leave Luca behind. Because we need a healer. And we can't leave Robo behind because he has to turn on the power. And I guess Chrono can't stay behind because he's the main character. As you can see, Robo has a higher level than the rest of our characters, and, and more health. He actually has a healing ability as well, Cure Beam, but that only heals one person at a time, I think, so far away it would still come in handy. Plus, we want Robo to be able to attack. We don't want him to make him a healer since he's strong. And that's pretty much it for this video.
we're going to go to the factory in the next video. So until then, thanks for watching, and we will see you in our next video part of this Chrono Trigger Let's Play, which is going to be part four as we go to the